is courtesy of the Atlantic. It's a pretty cool article, right? It says the following. Low-wage jobs are becoming middle-class jobs. Millions of low-income families are experiencing less financial stress and even a modicum of comfort, which is brilliant. So essentially what they're saying is that for whatever reason, we're in a state of now the economy, maybe because stuff is kind of like levelling out or whatnot, and we're kind of coming out of whatever mini-recession we're in. But it now means that people in that want to... Basically, the competition for a low-skilled job, especially if you're an employer, to get employees, like you're having to compete for people now to get your job. So in order to draw them in, these low-paying jobs are now increasing the hourly wage. The hourly, sorry, wage. So before, I remember for me, when I used to work retail or work in bars, uh, <laughs> I work in retail in bars. Sorry, I just glanced at the chat and I saw someone typed in 7-0. So, hey, whoever typed that in, oh, it's Teju. Go, go and dance in traffic. We're not talking about that right now, okay? This is a podcast. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what Seven Nodes referring to. I've not seen anything. Um, I don't know. I don't even know English that well. I just come to the country recently. I don't know what's going on. I have no idea what you're speaking about. And this is where this is this is my final word on it, okay? I don't know what you're talking about. So continuing on. These low skilled jobs now, uh, these employers are now forced to pay people more money in order to kind of attract them, attract these players to come in, which is great. Because I remember for me when I used to work retail, I used to work in the service industry, one of the I remember like a time when I got promoted. This is a promotion, imagine. I had a job where I was working as a sales assistant and then I was able to kind of um, apply to become the supervisor, which is not even the assistant manager. It's kind of the level of, 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 of below assistant manager. But you get the keys, you, you're able to kind of uh, put the rotor together, you're able to kind of do stock takes and stuff, maybe merchandise, but you're not really like management management. But you're still management in a way, which is kind of a cheap way for them to kind of get more out of you. Regards, I digress. At the time, I was working on a shop floor as a sales assistant full time, um, and this was at Dr. Martin's. I was getting eight pound an hour, and for me that was like great, especially if I was living at home, amazing money. Then suddenly, I applied for the promotion, quote unquote, um, to be the supervisor role. And I was applying it. I was competing with another guy that I was working for at the time. And, you know, it probably led to us falling out, actually. Um, I, remember, I remember recently once he added me and then unfollowed me on Instagram. I think he still feels salty about it because I think he was meant to get it. And then he kind of fluffed the interview and I kind of got, the, got it, even though I wasn't working there that long. Um, so I then got the promotion to become a supervisor. And my manager made a big deal about me getting a pay rise. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to get a pay rise. And I, in my head, think I'm going to get a pay rise. It's going to be mad money. I get a job, I officially signed, the, I get the contract, I'm about to sign it, I look at the hourly wage and the increase that I got from being a full-time sales assistant with having no managerial duties or responsibilities and then being a quote-unquote key holder, the only promotion bump I got was one pound. So I went from earning eight pound an hour to nine pound an hour being basically a quasi assistant manager without the title. I was a supervisor. I was still, you know, somewhat in charge and had to do the rotor and had a key and had to do do stock and whatever it may be. But I was only getting paid nine pounds an hour. Nine pound an hour. So I remember that being like a real piss take. I was like, bloody hell, man. People, I know it's not like, it's, you know, I'm not a programmer at the time. I wasn't, you know what I mean? I wasn't flipping, I wasn't doing flipping heart surgery or something, but it was still a hard job. It still required a lot of you and it should be getting paid way more than eight pound an hour regardless. So it's nice to hear that now times have moved on where the kind of entry level or the kind of standard wage, I think now the entry level wage, I think for a job like that is maybe like nine pound or something. So it's even increased now. So I'm sure in other places, especially if you go work for like a designer brand and you're working for let's say like a Balenciaga for sure they're going to pay you way more per hour but it's good that they're having to compete that like the market's kind of forced that so people on people that would be getting low wage jobs are a little bit more picky and now the employers are having to kind of you know um, acquiesce and do as so let's quickly read the topic and it'll kind of go over the things I spoke about it says Last month, Target announced that it would pay new employers as much as $24 an hour and extend health benefits to anyone working at least 25 an hour um, hours a week. The company is hardly the only one coughing up cash to lure in new workers or retain those on staff. Starbucks recently set a national minimum wage of $15. Uh, McDonald's, Dairy Queen and Subway franchises have been offering signing um, incentives and Lowe's is giving bonuses to hourly workers this month. For me, I say this because I've always operated and again, maybe people are different, but because I've always had like kind of, you know, aspirations and dreams to do other things right outside of working for the man. I've always looked at jobs a little bit. I've kind of it's kind of bad. I've kind of 
matured now. But I kind of looked at jobs a little bit beneath me. A little bit beneath me. I kind of thought, you know what? I'm always going to make it. I'm going to do something good. But that's obviously not a good attitude to have. You have to always respect your job, respect your work. And kind of, you know, I kind of now treat my work as an opportunity for me to kind of make money that I can then funnel back into stuff that I want to do. You know, whether it's buying DJ equipment, buying camera stuff, you know, designing things, printing things, whatever. That That's where I use that much. So I, so I kind of respect that job because it's given me the funds to do that. Obviously, it gives me some structure also. Le- meet new people, learn new skills, blah, blah, blah. But even if you don't respect jobs and you just treat them solely as a thing for you to make money, a good flipping, I think, incentive for you to work is to pay more, right? To pay slightly more because then it gives you a reason to be professional. It gives you a reason to be on time. It gives you a reason to just be just be a good employee. And I think that's really important in general. Even if you don't expect your job, just be a good employee and don't be like a drag, be like a, a, a an addition. People are not going to be upset. They see your name on the road. So like, it's going to be a long night. No, you want to be like kind of, you know, you want to help out people and shit. But a good way to help out people and stuff, I think just pay them more per hour. You pay them more per hour, I'm turning up on time every single day. Do you know what I mean? I'm not really asking for many holidays. I'm going to be banging out as many hours as possible, stacking my cash and then maybe taking a long trip, but I'm going to be on it like Sonic. And I think this is a good way to kind of get people's buy-in. Instead of doing the whole fake, we're a family nonsense that startups do, pretending like, you know, you care about the app that you're working, the company that you're working for when you don't really, just incentivize them by giving them more money, you know, maybe some bonuses and perks along the lines if you do want to progress, so that if you want to just work, just so you can buy your flipping Amiri jeans and you can, you know continue paying your car note you can but if you obviously want to progress and you want a career and you want to climb up the ladder you can also i think it works both ways it continues this is good news what is even better is that such pay bumps are not just a recent trend after the brutal few decades in which low-wage proliferated sorry low-wage jobs proliferated the american middle class hollowed out um the working poor that have started to earn more a lot more many low-wage jobs have become middle-wage jobs and incomes are increasing faster for poorer workers than for wealthier ones a dynamic known as wage compression oh, i don't know there's a term for it wage compression me like it as a result millions of low income families are experiencing less financial stress and even a modicum of comfort though the country's surging rents and rising price of inflation are burdening them too the yawning gaps between the different groups of american workers black white young and old and those without college degrees and those with one have stopped widening and started narrowing measures of poverty and income inequality are dropping I um, hesitate to call this the Great Compression, given that the earnings disparities remain the dominant feature of American labor market and American life. Um, But it really is a remarkable trend, a half decade old little compressions that policymakers should do everything in their power to extend, expand and turn great. Labor economics have identified two phenomena, one incremental, slow, one radical and sudden that have boosted the fortunes of the working poor. The first is the unemployment rate has gotten low enough for long enough to force companies to compete compete for workers thus raising wages we love to hear it you love to hear it the jobless um rate trickled down excruciating slowly during the obama years and has did uh, the ratio for job seekers openings but by the time the president donald trump took office employees in many parts of the country started to struggle to find retail uh, or retain workers we finally had the right labor sorry the tight labor market with well-functioning job ladder meaning that people were leaving the worst paying jobs said um whoever that person is <laughs> the economists at University of Massachusetts. Um, states and cities lifting their minimum wages might have helped bolster the trend. Indeed, one analyst found before the coronavirus hurt, hit, wage compression was occurring only in states that were lifting their minimums. So wage compression is happening. Low paid workers are getting paid loads of money. And I'd love to hear it. If you want to read the entire article, you can. It's available there on The Atlantic. Low wage jobs are becoming middle class. I'll put the link for this in the description once this show has finished. So you can check it out if you haven't already. So you can check it out if you haven't already.